Thank you for the introduction. I'm Hagai Ran, and today I'll present Nika, which is a software and hardware framework for inline application acceleration on FPGA-based smart NICs. This is a collaboration with Lior Zeno, Maroon Tork, Gabi Malka, and my advisor, Mark Zibelstein. FPGA-based smart NICs are used by uh, cloud providers like Microsoft and Tencent by adding programmable FPGAs into the uh, standard regular uh, network interface card uh, to provide the cloud infrastructure acceleration for things like software-defined networking and network function virtualization. For example, Microsoft has deployed SmartNIC on every Azure server since 2015. But these SmartNICs can be used for more than just cloud infrastructure. Let me explain what I mean by inline acceleration and the benefits of that using an analogy. Take this young father, for example. <laughs> he can sleep well knowing that his baby can wake him up whenever he needs to, uh, while his brain filters out any distractions or noises from the environment. Similarly, a smart NIC can filter incoming data and only alert the CPU when it actually needs to, thus reducing the CPU load and improving system throughput. A smart NIC can also manipulate or transform the data that comes into the CPU to make it simpler for CPU consumption. Here's an example of an application that might, might use these abilities. A key value store cache can store popular keys and items on the smart NIC. The smart NIC can serve cache hits directly without involving the CPU, thus improving the latency and throughput. Previous work have shown to the benefits of this approach. Another example uses a cryptographic offload to authenticate incoming requests using the COPE protocol, which is used by IoT servers, such as Samsung RT Cloud. This filtering can detect uh, malicious uh, messages and drop them without involving the CPU, protecting against denial of service attacks. Unlike IPsec offloads that could be used for similar uh, uh, functionality, the SmartNIC can uh, look into the application layer and customize the processing for the specific application. There's several challenges in deploying such SmartNIC accelerators in the cloud. To do that, we need operating system abstractions that would uh, expose the underlying uh, accelerators to the applications. And we need virtualization support to be able to share accelerators among multiple tenants, which includes state isolation support and performance isolation. We developed the Nika framework to answer these needs. In this talk, I will tell you about the iKernel abstraction, which is our abstraction to represent the smart NIC accelerators, and explain how we add virtualization support to share a single accelerator among multiple tenants. So the iKernel abstraction is designed to represent an AFU, an accelerator functional unit that exists in the FPGA on the smart NIC. We create an iKernel in the process to represent it, and then the process can control that instance of the accelerator. Our process also uses POSIX sockets to communicate with the network. By attaching the iKernel with the socket, the system, um, system makes it so that all the packets are processed by the AFU before reaching the socket. And the application can continue using that socket to access the filter data. iKernels have several interfaces. As, I, as I've mentioned, they can use POSIX sockets to access the data plane. But we've also developed a faster data plane interface we call the custom ring to bypass the host network stack. In addition, iKernels use RPC 
commands or uh, messages from the host to access the accelerator state. This can be used to configure cryptographic keys or to read performance counters. So here's an example of how an application might use an iKernel. First, it creates the iKernel, instantiates the AFU for it, and then it can configure it using RPC commands. After that, it may create sockets to communicate and attach them to the iKernel. And after that, it can just use the regular receive message API to receive data on that socket, but receiving only the filtered data. Using this abstraction, we were able to integrate an AFU with memcached with only 107 lines of code, showing its simplicity. Now we move to how we virtualize an iKernel or an AFU. And virtualization is important, important so we can deploy these kind of accelerators in a cloud environment. We can divide it into two topics, compute virtualization and IO virtualization. For compute virtualization, we first need to understand how we can share an a a AFU and an FPGA, or share, even share an FPGA among multiple tenants. One may use space sharing to divide the resources on the FPGA statically between different AFUs, but this can limit the utilization. Another alternative, which was used in previous work, uses coarse grain time sharing to switch dynamically between AFUs. But the, uh, and this can be used with the partial reconfiguration, for example, on FPGAs. But the long context switch time of partial reconfiguration makes it unsuitable for networking applications. Finally, we can use fine-grained time sharing. Uh, in this way, we take a single AFU and uh, let multiple tenants share its uh, same logic. We can use hardware context switching inside the AFU to switch between the context of the different tenants with relatively very low latency even at packet granularity. In Nika, our design supports the first two methods, but we focus on the fine-grained time sharing to uh, focus on how we virtualize the data plane for such AFUs. As a consequence of our uh, virtualization model, uh, we need to choose our, uh, the relevant deployment model for the cloud. In the FPGA as a service cloud deployment model, customers may bring their own design and uh, upload it to the cloud uh, and use it. And th this uses cost grain time sharing uh, in its implementation. This is used by services such as Amazon F1. But because customers bring their own design, we can trust that design to implement uh, AFU context switching. They could uh, leak data between different tenants, as you can imagine. Instead, we imagine that cloud providers will develop their own AFUs, and they would be trusted to implement fine-grained virtualization. And customers will choose from a marketplace of predefined AFUs the ones that they want to use. Now for IO virtualization, uh, we need to uh, virtualize every IO interface that the AFU can access in order to isolate it uh, and isolate the different tenants and the different AFUs. For that, we add logic that inspects and uh, processes the data on each interface and virtualize that by tagging the data on the interface with metadata specifying to which VM it belongs. In addition, we want to provide performance isolation guarantees so, so that one VM can't uh, acquire all the resources of a given link or a given resource. To do that, we add IO schedulers, packet schedulers, on the incoming and outgoing interfaces to the host or to the network um, that can uh, divide the bandwidth uh, with a weighted scheduler um, evenly. <coughs> 
And for compute uh, virtualization, as I mentioned, we have the uh, compute scheduler inside each AFU uh, that uh, schedules the compute resources. In the paper, you can find more details about how we implemented our hardware runtime, the integration with the host network stack, and how we added TCP support, our custom ring implementation, and how it utilizes an ASIC NICS RDMA abilities for its implementation, and our SROV and Power Virtual interfaces. Moving to the evaluation, we used the 40 gigabit bumping the wire smart NIC to implement the system. A NIC called the Mellanox Innova Flex, which combines a smart NIC, which, sorry, which combines an FPGA from Xilinx and the Mellanox ASIC NIC. This design is similar to the one used in Microsoft Catapult. Our evaluation uses the VMA user space network stack as a baseline to mitigate kernel uh, stack overheads and we evaluated using several micro benchmarks to show the uh, performance of the NICA infrastructure, as well as two applications, Memcached with the key value store cache and an IoT server that uh, shows the um, uh, authentication offload. In this talk, I, would focus, I will focus only on the Memcached experiments, but I want to stress the small number of lines of code required to integrate the IoT server with the AFU, again showing the simplicity of our abstraction. To run the Memcached example, we set the host with 32 million keys and configured the cache to host 2 million keys and used the system with 16 byte keys and values. We used the Memcached UDP ASCII protocol in the AFU. And integrating the AFU, as I've mentioned, only used a small number of lines of code. Here, you can see the uh, performance throughput uh, while varying different distributions of the uh, request, the requested keys. As you can imagine, with low hit rates, the uh, uh, throughput of the system doesn't improve as uh, as we filter packets because there are not much uh, packets to filter. But we still get two times performance improvement by using the customing mechanism to bypass the host network stack. When we increase the uh, zips u parameter, we get uh, uh, more heat rates. And for zip 99, which is the default by YCSB benchmark, we get four times improvement for filtering and nine times impro overall improvement with both filtering and the customing. If we increase, increase the, uh, the zip parameter further, further <coughs> we get almost all the, all the requests to hit the cache, and then the system is bottlenecked by the uh, AFU performance itself and by the network. We get new line rate performance uh, in that scenario. We ran another experiment with multiple virtual machines, trying to show the uh, scaling of the system with multiple VMs. Um, you can see that we get similar performance improvements even when using virtualization, and that the system scales linearly with a number of VMs. We also evaluated the latency of Memcached with Nika under virtualization. Here, you can see that for 60% uh, heat rates, which is the, uh, the heat rate that we got in this experiment, we get 2.1 microsecond uh, latency, which is the same as bare metal because this is the hardware performance. For MISES, we get 12 to 62 microsecond latency compared to six microsecond on bare metal, showing that the SmartNIC acceleration can reduce virtualization overhead. Finally, I want to show our performance isolation system. We run three virtual machines, 
uh, each receiving 20 million transactions per second uh, workload. As we add more and more VNs, the output bandwidth is limited to the overall 40 million transactions, and the output bandwidth is uh, divided evenly by our packet scheduler. We then add, uh, we then configure the uh, weights of the scheduler differently to get an uneven distribution, limiting the third VN's performance, while the, 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 uh, the rest of the bandwidth is split evenly between the first two VN's. It shows that our schedulers can uh, provide performance isolations for multiple virtual machines. In conclusion, NICA enables smart NIC acceleration for applications by providing uh, the abstractions needed and the virtualization support that is required to deploy it in the cloud. You can try out our code on GitHub. Thank you for listening, and I'll be happy to take your questions. Questions? Uh, Marius Korgas, CPFL. Uh, great work. Thank you for the presentation. I have a question regarding your TCP implementation. So I assume that uh, your FPGA can also send back replies without involving the host. So I would like to know how can you make sure that you can deliver replies in order when you have both the FPGA and, and the CPU sending back replies, and how can you maintain the TCP state consistent between the FPGA and the CPU? Thank you. Thank you for your question. That's a good question. Um, for TCP, we can't allow different uh, entities like the FPGA and the host to send packets uh, on the same socket at the same time. So we require that uh, for such workloads, the uh, host would use the customering to communicate with the AFU, and the AFU would send data on the socket on its behalf. Okay, let's thank our speaker again. <laughs>